What's going on internet, IG here again today with another Linux distro review and today I'm finally looking at Linux Mint 16, Petra, and yes I'm looking at the Cinnamon Edition. <laughs> Okay, so it's been a crazy busy schedule for me lately and obviously a great number of distros have come out. So I'm going to try and get through them as quickly as I can and for production reasons, yeah, it's been a little bit difficult to set up a camera recently. So I'm just going to stick with the screen and get straight into the review. So Linux Mint 16 is sporting a new version of Cinnamon and a new version of Mate or the Mate desktop environment depending on how you want to say that. But I'm just going to be looking at the Cinnamon edition because that's the one that I find the most interesting. Of course, Mate has got a development cycle of its own, but of a lot, a lot of it is just replacing core components with uh, with substitutes that basically resemble the same thing. They don't really add too many features; they just stabilize the features that they have and distance them from the known project. Along a similar theme, Cinnamon has also developed a lot, but in its own right, as a desktop environment, it has now become independent of the known project, and all of the backends and daemons that it uses to run all of these different settings and desktop environment goodness is all run within Cinnamon itself, so it's very self-contained now, which is a pretty fantastic achievement on this side of the Linux Mint team. Now, the way that this is going to be most evident is through looking through system settings. All of these things are managed by the Linux Mint system settings now, instead of running through some through Cinnamon settings, some through GNOME settings. They're all under the one searchable and structured system settings panel, which I think is fantastic, a great step towards usability. As a complete desktop experience, I'm going to say right out of the gate here that I really like the direction that Linux Mint is going. And for the moment, it appears that Linux Mint 16, the Cinnamon Edition, will be my default desktop, at least for the for the next little period of time. Really, this centers around three things, the speed and stability of it, the customization abilities that it gives you, and the fact that it's fairly minimalist and stays out of your way. Now, what do I mean by all that? Well, essentially, Linux Mint has had a tradition of providing a desktop that is optimal for the user's experience. They've had the user in mind the whole time, and as they've developed and as le the Linux desktop has developed over the years, a great many changes have come through with all of this convergence stuff, Ubuntu has gone its own direction looking for convergence, and the average desktop user has kind of been left in the lurch, and that's why Linux Mint continues to try and provide that Linux desktop experience that we all know and love, while still embracing and improving on the technologies that they have available to them. And that's why I reckon Cinnamon is a fantastic option for those of you who are looking for a more traditional desktop paradigm, but still able to use all of the latest goodies that come down from the various Linux rivers. Now, like I said, the system settings panel is a great place to start because it shows, it really brings to light a lot of the work that the Linux Mint team and the Cinnamon team have been doing uh, over the last six months since the last release. Linux Mint 16 includes Cinnamon 2.x, which basically means that it, they've finally included it as a full desktop environment independent of anything from the GNOME project. And that includes a whole bunch of options as far as customizing effects or themes or applets or desktop desklets or the little desktop widgets here and everything about the system both on an appearance level and also on a hardware and administration level. Now when you combine these settings with the Mint tools that have already been around in Mint for some time, some of them have been around for longer than others, but when you combine those that sort of customization with the tools that they provide such as their backup tool, their software sources manager, their software installer, their driver manager, and all of those other Mint tools that we've grown to know and love, it really provides a very full and rounded out desktop experience with a lot of tools to customize and manage all of the things about your system with minimal fuss. I was really surprised with how quickly I could get set up and get working with Linux Mint 16 upon install because A, they give you a good selection of applications that are installed by default here in the Mint menu but they also make it really, really easy for you to install other software, get to the PPAs that you want, use the mirrors that you want, back up and restore the files from other systems that you might have, get those drivers up and running. It's a very well structured and streamlined approach. And not only that, it's comprehensive. It covers nearly everything that you're going to want to do about your system, but not in a way that makes you feel overly nerdy or involved in your systems management. Now, of course, one of the sore spots that I've had about the Linux Mint desktop for the last couple of releases has been the software manager. And to be honest, while a couple of the gripes still remain, functionally, the software manager on the Linux Mint desktop, uh, especially here in 16, is just as smooth and functional as ever. It still has, of course, the same icons, ratings, and lowercase titles and all of that, the visual stuff which doesn't really appeal to me too much, 
But as far as actual functionality goes, when you double click on an item in this software center and you want to install it, it's a simple double click, then you hit the install button and it will install it and put it on the list down here on the status bar. Now, as you go along, you'll notice that with software centers like the Ubuntu software center, as you add more software, it seems to slow down more and more to the point where oftentimes it will crash simply because it just can't manage what you're asking it to do. Well, not so with the Linux Mint Software Manager. I queued up 50 or more packages for it to install and it just chugged through them, no worries at all. It would just keep adding them to the queue and go through them, installing them like a boss. And I think it deserves a lot of respect for that fact alone as it's one of the few software managers that can actually claim to simultaneously install applications on a queue without grinding itself into an absolute traffic jam. So for those who know what software they want and they're not really too focused on software discovery, then the software manager handles the bill very nicely. Now one thing I also do like to comment every now and again is the fact that the wallpapers are really nice in the Linux Mint releases as of late. They've got some nice synthetic ones here and then some nice photographs as well, all of which make for a very nice desktop experience. Of course, it's very shallow of me to say these kind of things, but it's a nice touch when you can go into change your background and see that there's some nice refreshing backgrounds there for you to have fun with. Now also when it comes to customization, like I mentioned, you do have a few new settings here in the recent release of Cinnamon 2.0 and some of those include sound effects. Now I've got to say, I've, I'm not really a huge fan of sound effects. They're a little bit too cartoony for my taste, but that's not to say you can't have a bit of fun with them. So if I go to the sound, men, sound menu, you can see here that I've got sound effects as an option, and I can have sound effects for all of these different commonly used tasks on a computer, and it gives it a little bit more feedback when you're resizing windows or minimizing them, etc. It's also worth mentioning that the some of the applets and tools up here on the panel bar have undergone a little bit of work as well, such as the user menu here. It's now easier to jump in and out of different accounts, and you can also switch off all the notifications that are coming into your account so that you can work without being disturbed. When it comes to Cinnamon as a desktop environment and as a window manager, it's also becoming easier and easier to manage these different windows thanks to some fantastic window tiling and keyboard shortcuts. So if you have a few different apps open at once, you can simply tile them around your desktop using the meta keys. Or, and you can untile them by doing the exact reverse. So it makes tiling windows around your desktop a lot easier. And I think it's fairly efficient and well executed. Nemo, the default file manager, has also undergone some fantastic improvements, making it a more fully functional file manager, which is great, especially considering all the other file managers which are focusing on making it more simple. So now it's much easier to assign certain apps to open certain file types. And again, this is all in an effort to distance themselves from the GNOME project, making their own standalone products like Nemo and the Cinnamon desktop environment as a standalone force to be reckoned with. And as far as speed and stability goes, I've really appreciated the performance tweaks that of course have come through the Ubuntu 13.10 release cycle, and they're definitely here in Linux Mint 16 as well. With the screen capture running, you can see I'm chugging through quite a bit of RAM and quite a bit of CPU, but I've certainly got plenty to spare there, and at no point have I felt like this system can't handle itself. So my ultimate recommendation is if you're looking for a traditional desktop user paradigm, you're not interested in touchscreen funkiness, you just want a desktop that's going to get work done. This one might not be the best designed in the book, but it's certainly getting pretty dang close. With the addition of all of those power user features like desktop widgets, applets, workspace management, the ability to customize the entire look and feel of your desktop, and all of those fantastic Mint tools, then I think you're going to be well set with the Linux Mint 16 desktop. Bear in mind, of course, it is only going to be a nine month support cycle, just like the other interim releases between Ubuntu's LTS releases. But hey, if you're going to be wanting to get work done on this system, then I reckon it's worth installing. It doesn't take long to set up, and you'll very quickly realize that Linux Mint is happy to cater to your needs, not you cater to the needs of your operating system. As always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, then definitely click the like button down below. And if you want to see this sort of stuff on a regular basis, then definitely hit that subscribe button up there in the top right hand corner. That'll be all from me. I will see you all in the very near future. I'm going to be taking a look at OpenSUSE 13.1, another powerful desktop. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.